Uh, my name is Gabriel Rivera. I'm a first generation Mexican American artist, um, originally from California, uh, but currently I am splitting my time between Oaxaca, Mexico and Brooklyn, New York. I did my undergraduate in, in fashion, um, but I did my master's in uh, fine arts. Um, so I kind of consider myself a kind of interdisciplinary artist. Um, I really love research. Um, and as of late, uh, for the last few years, I've been focusing my research on botanical dyes. Um, and um, with that study, um, a lot of different tangents have come from that research. I came back to dyes after a trip to uh, my family's place in California. And I just had my dye equipment there and that I had just kind of kept in storage and I tapped back into it. And it was just a moment to have a practice that I could share with my family um, in terms of our lineage that's in connection to land. Um, my family immigrated from, uh, from Mexico to California and they all, my parents worked the, the fields essentially in, in mass agriculture. Um, but my mom has this incredible green, green thumb and my dad is just this, uh, just knows how to also grow, you know, anything. And I think that's been passed on to me um, to a certain extent. And this relationship to plant life, uh, the vibrancy of my culture in terms of color, um, I think it, it, I've come to realize it's, it's, it has to do with like my lineage, which um, I've only learned in time. Uh, in terms of like where the plants come from, I've been primarily focusing on Mexican dyes, Mexican dye plants. And um, so it all, it's been like, what's been circulating is that it's process in relationship to my lineage, in relationship to color and form and, and how that could speak to the contemporary moment and how that could be included in say an exhibition or what could be shared from that, that practice. But I think it does come down to like a certain family connection. Um, so the piece that is in the show um, is titled Song One, and they are essentially, I call them tablets, um, and, but in form and how they're made, they're almost not unlike book covers, uh, but the, the, it's just the front cover and it's just the cloth itself covering the book board. And I hand dyed uh, the book cloth and there are basically three tones and those tones are made out of uh, indigo which I had created a uh, indigo vat in my studio and it was a naturally fermented vat behind the flip side of each uh, tablet uh, you have some information that has been printed um, and the back is created just like the back of a book board finished with end paper and in that, the, the back of the tablet, the information of the name of the um, plant itself and in, in terms of its indigenous name, its common name or its common English name and also its taxonomical name. And I also give a little bit of information about the process in which it took to make that color. So with Song One, with these indigo tablets, it, it, I, I speak to the various, the, the amount of dips I had to, place the cloth into the vat to get a certain depth of indigo blue. Um, so certain aspects of like process, a little aspects of identification, a, a little bit, a little bit of like context of the plant of where it comes from. Um, I'm kind of teasing out like a, a little bit of, of this plant story, but it's story in relationship to us as humans in terms of how we identify and work with and frankly sometimes colonize plants and how that plays out. I wanna simply say I'm, I'm trying to slowly tell their story but I'm very careful in saying that just because I feel hesitant in being the person to tell the story of this plant that doesn't necessarily have language like we do. So I was asked like, who am I to, to speak for this other being, this other entity. Um, but I think I've taken on that role and there's an audio piece that goes along with tablets and I kind of elaborate on that position that I'm taking on as this kind of um, human that's trying to give voice or offer or, or listen to the voice of more accurately of these plants um, through color.
and form. I keep saying to myself over and over again that I don't want to think about what I want to say to you because I don't want to drown out all my feelings with thoughts, drown out all the emotions that sit right behind the surface, the sadness, the anxiety, the desire, the anger. But I was recently told by a voice that spoke to me during my first Temescal ceremony that said, Guardalos, guardalos. Hold them in safe keeping, it said, and care for your emotions. So I will. <laughs> <laughs> 